The Mughal Empire in Forge of Empires. The Mughal Empire is the fifth cultural settlement in Forge of Empires and again varies the theme of the temporary outpost a bit. For completing the settlement, the Mughal Temple beckons as a reward. It should be remembered that this prize is granted in any case. Only the additional rewards depend on the observance of the time limit. It should be mentioned that it is possible to move the embassy. Depending on the location of the obstacles, this can be helpful to get, for example, longer canals or alleys with high bonus values in diplomacy. But this does not change the solution path presented here. The first quest is Build 6 Bewan. These cost just coins and supplies from the normal city. Don't forget the road connection. Each road segment costs a whopping 200 rupees. Rupees are extremely scarce in the beginning, even though we can get an initial stock of 6200 rupees at the start of the game. So watch out when building roads. The second task is to build three alleys. With these, it is important to know that alleys only have a bonus if they are built exactly in front of the embassy. Each section of the alley brings 24 diplomacy, so three sections give 72 diplomacy plus a bonus of 30 diplomacy if they are placed correctly. That is exactly 102 diplomacy. For this second task, there are 500 rupees. We urgently need these. Next, we are supposed to harvest 10 basmati rice. So we build two rice paddies and after building them, we produce rice in both for four hours. This first production costs 1000 rupees each. Thus, the stock melts away quickly. More residential buildings can be built to bring in more rupees. In doing so, weight the cost of roads well with the yields of 51 rupees every 4 hours. But roads are always needed and can be moved at will. If then, after 4 hours, the 10 produced rice are collected, the quest is fulfilled and for 5 basmati rice, you can then unlock water channels in the embassy. Since we still have enough diplomacy from the three alleys, this is possible without any problems. Now, one of the two rice paddies can be torn down again to make room for a Sari weaver. There are also 500 rupees for this quest. In between, you can buy a land expansion with 5 basmati rice. Basically, at the beginning, you always buy a land expansion if it is available for the price of 5 goods. At first, never buy the more expensive expansions, because the production of goods requires rupees and these are scarce. Only in the very advanced game you will purchase more expensive land expansions. Occasionally, quests with one or two tools for removing obstacles on purchased expansions. Use these tools very selectively, especially making sure to use them to improve the length of alleys and water canals. The additional bonuses then subsequently facilitate further unlocks in the embassy. Two insights are important in this initial phase. First, being able to be active in the game every four hours is extremely helpful. Longer intervals make it more difficult to meet the deadline. At the beginning of this cultural settlement, it is completely normal to have the impression that progress is extremely slow. However, do not let this tempt you to extend the 4 hour interval unnecessarily often. The activation in the embassy has absolute priority. Align all activities with it. 
This way, new buildings will become available, which will end the rupee bottleneck or which will bring additional free daily goods. If a quest or an unlock in the embassy requires high diplomacy values, almost everything in the city has to be demolished each time, especially the goods production buildings. Sometimes you can leave one or two residential buildings standing, especially if you also rely on Baldachin and Charbak to achieve the diplomacy values. This does not simplify the task, because the higher diplomacy values of these buildings require additional residential buildings. But preserving these residential buildings shortens the reconstruction time of the city. Basically, the required diplomacy values can always be reached through canals and alleys, which are all torn down again after the desired unlocking. With the streets, you can fill hidden corners of the map by moving them. Never demolish roads, because their reconstruction would cost rupees. When rebuilding, be sure to have one shard tree one canopy and one charbak, each directly adjacent to the embassy, as this activates the daily free goods. This makes it much easier to meet the deadline. For the final task, it is then helpful to purchase more expensive land expansions as well. But now the rupee production has increased to such an extent that numerous production facilities can be operated in parallel without any problems. Your own skill and luck with the location of the obstacles decide whether you need two of the more expensive land expansions or more. It is very important to step on the gas again at the end, to concentrate on the quests and to produce as few unnecessary goods as possible. Normally there are two to three quests left in the quest series to complete once all the buildings in the embassy have been unlocked. Generally, I recommend that new players first gain experience with at least one of the other cultural settlements before tackling the Mughal Empire. But once you get the hang of it, you can successfully complete this cultural settlement as well.